Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are and the time that you are watching this video. I hope everyone is fine. Now, the objective of this video is to help execute a stochastic frontier model using cross-sectional data. And uh, by cross-sectional data, we simply mean that data that has been collected across cross-sectional elements at a one period in time. So, typically, uh, this is what a stochastic frontier model looks like. So you have yi being the logarithm of your output, your alpha being the constant, your x being a vector of explanatory variables, your b uh, being the vector of uh, what we call technology parameters. These are simply coefficients, but they enter into what we call a technology regression. So uh, the b that you see there, these are coefficients that tell us how each variable in x affect the production frontier and then plus um, the error term which is composite composite in the sense that it comprises two elements vi is um, the normal disturbance term which we all know that um, it captures random shocks and is supposed to be almost cadastic and uh, negative ui is here the technical inefficiency score which is one-sided and uh, it follows the distribution f okay so because it's cross-sectional data i have observations from one uh, running up to 1288 so i'm gonna be using a data set for illustration purposes which is effectively this one is this one but I think I'm gonna use uh, from column D up to column H just for illustration purposes okay so if I, what I did was I copied this data set as you can see it runs up to 1288 yeah 1288 so I copied the last row and um, I pasted in, in starter. Okay, I pasted in starter, which is right here. So um, I have these variables, they are appearing here. How you do that, you simply copy from Excel. You come here, yeah, you click here. Um, apologies, I don't know what is happening with my laptop. It's a bit slow, but I think it will be okay. Okay, so what we did to receive this output was we went here. So I'm assuming you would have copied your data set from, from Excel. So you come here, you click once. When you click once, this page will be empty. So you come at the right corner, on the left top left corner, you right click and then you paste. But I'm not going to do that because I've already done that. As you can see, these are my variables. So now um, I'm going to make an assumption that uh, I'm a typical researcher who wants to okay who wants to achieve two objectives. One is to measure the level of technical efficiency maybe among farmers, and um, the second objective is to determine how the experience of each farmer affects the levels of efficiency. So I'm going to assume that this is the experience variable. Okay, I'm going to assume that this is the, for illustration purposes. So I have output, which is my dependent variable, labor and, and capital. So these are my inputs. Okay, so these are the inputs um, with which farmers have control over. Now the command for a stochastic frontier model in starter using cross-sectional data is simply SF cross, and then you space you click your dependent variable followed by your independent variable and then after doing that you put a comma and then you space um, you write the model so i'm gonna so there are many models uh, but i'm gonna uh, for illustration purposes rely on the Bates and coeli model so i'm gonna type bc in the, in the brackets in the parentheses space we also need to specify the distribution dist. Uh, the distribution is of the inefficiency because 
we can for it to be estimable we have to specify uh, the distribution of our technical inefficiency now uh, there are several distributions you can uh, try the half normal we have the truncated normal we have the exponential and so forth so i'm gonna start with what we call the truncated normal and by the way it is only the truncated normal that will allow you to estimate both uh, the, the frontier model together with the technical inefficiency effects which is uh, the one-step approach remember when you are doing this you can either do it using a one-step approach or a two-step approach a two-step approach is where you regress your frontier model first and you generate your level of technical inefficiency and then in the second stage you regress uh, some of the factors that you think have a relevant effect on technical efficiency or technical inefficiency but as we know that uh, the two-step approach is a bias and it's inconsistent so i will rely on the truncated normal distribution which allows me to estimate using the one-step approach okay so i'm going to specify here tn for truncated normal distribution and um, orientation remember technical efficiency can be input oriented or output so i'm going to focus on output oriented technical efficiency and then i'll space uh, e mean now these are the factors that affect the level of technical efficiency so here i'm going to click experience so i'm sort of trying to determine how experience affects these farmers technical efficiency or technical inefficiency so once I do this, uh, you click enter, and then uh, it will take some time because the uh, starter uses the maximum likelihood technique, which goes through several iterations until it finds the solution. There we are. So uh, this is this will be our output. Let me try to make it a little bigger so that you can all see. Um, okay. So this is our stochastic frontier output, and on top on top here, as we all know. Okay, let's start from here. One point two eight eight. These are the observations that we have, um, and then the p values simply validating the that the entire model is statistically significant. And you can as well check um, the video that I did earlier this year, if not last year, uh, about determining whether the efficiency level, the efficiency effects are present or not. The same procedure still applies. You can compute the variance parameters and try to determine the the the, the, the variance in output which is attributed to technical inefficiencies. So here, sigma mu is our technical in component okay which is 0 0.89 sigma v is uh, that component of the disturbance term now uh, going to the technology regression or the frontier model we have labor and capital and by the way i hope you can see that i have made an assumption that a uh, you know the output follows a cop douglas data generating process so i'm uh, assuming a cop douglas functional form you might want to experiment with other with the alternative uh, the translog specification and see the results that you get but for illustration purposes and for simplicity i have simply assumed the cop douglas okay so you can see that labor um, is a significant effect uh, the p value is 0, 0.00 in fact both of them they are significant but it appears that capital is a larger effect uh, on, on these farmers its production the constant is also significant. Um, take note that here there is, you do not have need of uh, capturing technical changes because cross-sectional data set has been collected at one period in time. This is one key difference between using cross-sectional and panel data. Stochastic frontier, you don't need to capture technical changes. Now below here, mu is the dependent variable, which is our technical inefficiency. Now, um, the independent variable there is experience. So as I indicated earlier, we want to establish how the experience of each farmer correlates with the efficiency with or efficiency levels. Now, the coefficient is negative, as you can see, and is statistically significant at 1%. Uh, 
which shows that uh, there is a negative relationship between experience and technical inefficiency. So in other words, more experienced farmers are technically efficient than those that are less experienced. Okay, so another way of interpreting it uh, would be if we had measured our experience in terms of years, then we would say a, an additional year of experience for each farmer is associated with a reduction in technical inefficiency of 0.277 units. Okay, so the more experienced the farmer becomes, the less inefficient he becomes. Or put differently, the more experienced the farmer becomes, the more efficient that farmer becomes. So the negative, take note that the negative sign here is a reduction in technical inefficiency because the dependent variable is technical inefficiency. Okay, so this will be our output. And if you want to compute uh, the levels of technical efficiency, again, the command is still the same, it's predict. Because we are using the Bartesian Coelho models, BC, JLMS, okay. JLMS is simply um, a command that tells starter to compute technical efficiency levels following a method by John Ruet R. So once you click there, you, re you will see at the top left corner here, you now have technical uh, efficiencies that have been computed via uh, uh, Bartesian Coelho method, the John Ruet method. Now if you come to your data, if you come to your data, you can see that uh, Stata has already computed these efficiency levels. These uh, efficiency levels. Yeah, they are. And um, what else might you be interested in? And you can summarize them by some BC. You will be able to see that out of 1,288 observations, the mean efficiency uh, on average, uh, each farmer is operating I mean, the technical efficiency level is 89.43%, okay, so roughly 90%, which means that uh, on, on average, a typical farmer is operating 10% below A or his maximum output, okay, and then uh, this one is the minimum efficiency level, and this one is the maximum efficiency level. Um, I, I, might, I must also emphasize the fact that um, this is a simplified version. You might want to experiment, as I've indicated earlier, to estimate instead a translog and, and see a translog. You will need to include some polynomial terms and interactions and check if uh, they are statistically significant. Um, a, con a customary way is to estimate these two uh, and then check which one best suits uh, the data generating process, the, the underlying data that you have. But I hope for illustration purposes this will help. Another interesting thing uh, that we can do using uh, the SF cross command is, as we know, it can also model the problem of heteroscedasticity. So if you think that heteroscedasticity could be problematic in your analysis, you might also capture it uh, within this model. And what you will do is, um, okay, I'm just going to bring back the same code. I've just clicked on top here to avoid retaking again. You can extend this model to by modeling heteroscedasticity. Okay. Now, so if you think, for example, that um, your Inefic your inefficiency term is heteroscedastic, is heteroscedastic and the heteroscedasticity is emanating from a, a certain variable, maybe z or x, which you would have here. You can model it. So now the challenge that I have now is I don't have an extra variable that I might uh, include to say this is the source of heteroscedasticity. But I'm just going to, for illustration purposes, I'm just going to repeat experience in that function. So you go there and you say yeah, U uh, sigma, you open the parentheses, and then you put those Z variables that you think are the sources of heteroscedasticity, particularly in the inefficiency term. Once you do that, you click enter.
So there, there is your output. Um, so you see what has been added here is repo experience under the U Sigma model. So you are you are saying taking is so you are, you are actually saying the variance of um, the variance of your inefficiency term is explained by experience. This could be four or five other variables that you think are the main sources of heteroskedasticity in a stochastic Frandia model. You might think that heteroskedasticity is also coming from uh, the disturbance term. Okay, sorry, this was, okay, yeah, the disturbance term is here, V sigma. You might also think that heteroskedasticity is also coming from the disturbance term and not the inefficiency or both. In that case, you would need to add again by saying V sigma so that you can determine how these variables affect as well the variance of your disturbance term. Click enter. Um, there we are. So this would be a model in which you are controlling for your elasticity with these variables, experience, experience. Remember, as I said earlier, that um, you would need certain variables to include here. They might not necessarily be the same as those that are in the technical inefficiency function. Okay. So you you might as well need to consider. It depends on how your model is behaving. Okay. Uh, and I also, I think I remember mentioning the fact that we might have dis different distribution. You might experiment changing the distribution of the inefficiency term to a half normal, for example. But as I've indicated earlier again, uh, when you, the problem with the half normal is it won't allow you to execute using the one-step approach, of which we love the one-step approach because it is less exposed to the bias and the inconsistent that the two-step approach is associated with. Uh, and you can see, you can see from here, when I try to estimate with half normal, it gives you this error which says conditional mean model is allowed only for distribution truncated normal. Uh, the same is true if you want to try with the exponential, you will get the same message. So this is the validation that you can only estimate a one-step approach when your distribution of the inefficiency term is truncated normal. Otherwise, anything aside apart from that, uh, the truncated normal, you would need to go to direct you or to divert you to the two-step approach, which we know is a bias. Okay. Now, um, let's just uh, remove uh, the e-mean for one-step approach so that we can estimate with an exponential distribution and, and see how the, the model behaves, okay? So this would be our stochastic frontier model with uh, the exponential uh, you know, assumption. And um, with uh, half normal, we just change here, HN. I hope you can see that uh, the variance of the inefficiency is no longer significant. Okay. So this is now with half normal. So you can see here with the H normal, half normal model, the inefficiency term is insignificant, but the average parameters are significant. So that's the importance of uh, testing several functional forms and choose the one that you think best suits the model and the objectives of your study. I hope this helped, folks. You can type in a comment with uh, what you would need more clarity or what or what you might need me to include in the next video. Thank you.